is more about making people care about you, even if you don't know who they are, making people care about your life that has become content for them to consume. The only reason I'm here, oh wait, let me just do my intro real quick. <laughs> Yes, it's I. Wow. It's your girl, Damon the God. Back. Oh my God. That was Onyx going on the scratching post in the middle of me talking. It's like y'all who have been <laughs> watching my videos this entire time, you know that this happens. Like he constantly does this. As soon as I start talking for the video, he over there, now he want to go on the scratch and post, now he want to go in the little box. It's like, sir. And he's just sitting there looking like, <laughs> whatever, girl. Anyways, but yes, it's your girl, Sam and the God. And as I was about to say, the only reason I really decided to make a video, like, for real, is because I really like my nails. <laughs> And I wanted to show them off. Okay. So, thank Andy, my new nail tech, because he is the reason why I'm here. Okay. <laughs> um, so, with that being said, I won't really act as though I have much of a topic. I am pretty much freestyling today. One thing I did want to say, though, is like... I feel detached from the lock journey. What do I mean by that? What does she mean by that? I mean, like, because I was thinking about it, like, I don't hold the desire to consistently make content about my hair or really much of anything that's going on in my life because I'm more engrossed and immersed in my real life experiences that I'm having, whether they're good or bad. It's like, I'm more involved in them than I am in the concept of making this into a video topic that I can turn into content that people care about and want to watch like and the reason that connects to my lock journey is because I don't have that desire to like let me style my hair let me do something cute with my hair for the purpose of making a video about my hair it's like oh my locks is like I've been here for eight years I've said more than enough about the lock journey, what it brings to your life, the benefits, the, the difficulties, whatever the case may be. And so I don't feel a need to like discuss them, make it a topic. Now it's just like, this is just my hair. It's the hair on my head. What do I, I wash it. I style it. <laughs> I dry it. Put on a bonnet at night. Like there, there's nothing for me to say. So that is why I feel like this detachment from the journey per se, because it's like, I'm living my life. What is no longer a locked journey, it's just my life. Just like when you work out, it becomes a part of your lifestyle. When you journal every day, it becomes a part of your lifestyle. So why do I need to talk about it? Like, it just is. And so, yeah, I just wanted to say that real quick. And I'm sure you, you, you all have continued to see a lot of the girls who were lock influencers, like getting rid of their locks and everything. It's just like, whatever. I still have mine. They're cute. This is what I did perm rods like three weeks ago. The curls have fallen now, but like this is the residual effect. And I just do stuff like this, like a little something like that, a little something like that, whatever. Grab up some at the top. That's what I've been doing with my hair child. Nothing that requires like a video tutorial or the explanation. It's just like, I'm just taking care of my hair. I no longer care about the whole locks of it all, the journey of it all. It's just like, it's just hair in my head. <laughs> That's how I feel. And then when I think about my life and making it into content, like people will be like, oh, you should do vlogs, you should do this, you should talk about that, talk about that. And I'm just like, I don't want to. I don't want to make vlogs. I don't want to have to station my camera whenever I go out to do an activity and record myself doing it 
for the purpose of making a video to show y'all that I'm doing it, you know, to make it into content. Like, I feel like influencing content creation going viral has turned society into this weird, I don't know, where, like, everything that you do in your life, everything you do on social media has to be behind the lens of content. Like, you go on Instagram, you go on TikTok, you go on wherever you go and you're just are being bombarded by people trying to be creative at you (laughs) you're just like everybody want a podcast everybody want a youtube channel everybody want a tiktok all for the purpose of going viral though not even because they have something of substance or something new or original to offer they just want virality and that has turned life online into this continuous production wheel and for me for those who know you know I never came on YouTube for the purpose of being an influencer or a content creator I was literally like I want to watch my hair develop and grow and have visual evidence of it and then people started gravitating to me to me and my channel because I started it when the lock trends started to like pick up momentum you know, and so people are looking for locks on YouTube and they find me and they're like, "Ooh, I like her. What's she talking about? And now people are subscribing and commenting and all of a sudden I have a platform, but that's not what I came here for. And so that's why it's OK. Like I'm OK with like falling back for however long I fall back or recording on whatever I feel like talking about for real, <laughs> whether it's about my hair or not, because it has been about me this entire time. Not about forcing content for the internet. (laughs) Like, I can't just say that I go to the gym and work out. Now that I have a platform, I would have to record myself doing it and put it in a video and call it a vlog. Why? (laughs) I don't know. Like, I've always been the type of person who, when any kind of thing became trendy or, like, overly populated by people trying to hop on the bandwagon I get turned off from that thing I've just always been that way even as a kid something turns me off about seeing people just be like super super (laughs) followy follow flashy just monkey see monkey do so going seeing what social media has become it's no longer really about staying in touch with people. I mean, I use it like that in certain respects, but it's not about being social per se. It's more about making people care about you, even if you don't know who they are, making people care about your life that has become content for them to consume and making them care enough so that you can go viral and hopefully get rich. But that's not how any of this works. Like going viral... (laughs) And then making it a lifestyle. That's not how any of this works. Like, it's all random. It's random. Going viral is random. Having a big platform is often random. Unless you are genuinely talented and, like, curating something on purpose. Because you have the skill. You have the tech. You have the resources. And even in doing all of that, that doesn't automatically translate into viral content or success on the internet. But everyone is trying to do it. And it's like... Yeah, whatever. So with that being said, <laughs> I just said a whole bunch just to really say, okay, Onyx. Onyx just coming to the camera a little bit. He walking all over the place, but he not showing himself. There we go. Got a little piece, a little portion. <laughs> but yeah, y'all, it's weird. But okay, I mean, I guess since I'm here, I can provide some updates. Like, what's been going on, Sammy? Um, well, I know in my last video, I was talking about that I've been going on, that I've been dating out here and it's been an interesting experience and um I mentioned someone being in the picture a little bit and seeing like how long that lasts ciao (laughs) yeah (laughs) men are just wow it's like I'm seeing what people meant when they described 
people like men in Atlanta as kind of like fraudulent. I don't even. I feel like that word is really intense to describe it. I feel like that word isn't necessarily it. It's more of a being more concerned with how you are perceived by women as opposed to who you are for real and how you actually move. Like, that's what I'm seeing a little bit because I haven't really, like, dated multiple people to, like, see and compare. But from my recent experiences that I've been having, I'm like, <laughs> do, they, do, they, do they think we're slow? Like, we, we can't compute that one plus one equals two? They be on to one plus one equals seven. And when you're like, no, <laughs> now it's a thing. It's like, what the hell is this, child? For instance, for those who watch Love is Blind, I'm not even going to like, spend too much time on that. But if you watch Love is Blind and you know what I'm talking about season six with Clay, it's an example of what I mean when I say like, some of these men out here just want to be perceived as capable and perceived as, like, whatever. But then when you actually experience them, they simply aren't. Maybe whether it's a matter of readiness or, like, self-work or development needs to be focused on a bit more than it has been or whatever the case may be, they just aren't yet. And so as women in dating them is like just a constant un unfolding and realization of that as opposed to the ideal which would be I'm presented with someone and they're presenting themselves as they are and I get the pleasure of continuously learning them and experiencing them and they me and we're just like peeling back the layers learning about each other having good times and bad times and growing and <laughs> having your person like Ideally, right? It would ideally just flesh out like that. But what actually tends to happen is you have to spend a portion of time fact-checking, <laughs> like confirming or denying if what they said and presented is actually what they are. Like, oh, my God. Have y'all been seeing Risa Tisa and Who the F Did I Marry? Like, her scenario is way extreme, way extreme. And by no means is it the norm. But it does speak to like a shared experience that women are having out here with that behavior. And it's interesting that they were in Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. Bada boom, bada boom. <laughs> Ciao. It is. Mm. Mm. But... By way of continued updates, I've made another friend. So I'll tell y'all I made a friend at the nail um, salon. That's the home. Me and her, we were just hanging out the other day, okay? Good vibes. Good vibes. I love her. She's awesome. And then I made another friend recently in my Zuma class. She's also a vibe. Love her vibes. Like, good people. Like, good people. So, you know, we're going to start hanging out as well. And then I saw another girl. And I was like... Ooh, I also want to be your friend. It's just cute. Like, it's cute. I, <laughs> it's cute. Like, I've been curating a little community around myself. I've been living in my own space, my own world, my own bubble for real. Getting new plants. You can't even see my plants. Maybe I'll do, like, a quick little video and add it in here. But, like, getting new plants getting the atmosphere in my home how I want it to feel which is just peace like this is my sanctuary I just come here I relax I unwind I tap in I fill my cup I found a black woman doctor with locks and here's the thing I wasn't looking for that it wasn't like let me find me a doctor that's a black woman that looks like this it wasn't any of that but I found her anyway because my insurance covers her and blah 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 and so I'm like, actually, I made an appointment for a physical in the next couple of weeks. And I'm actually excited. Like, who gets excited to go to the doctor? Nobody. But I'm excited to go to my doctor because she's a black woman with locks. And the atmosphere of her doctor's office is not like 
the type that you typically come across. Like in a hospital setting, it's more like warm and cistrinly. So I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to see my doctor. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Adulting. I've been adulting, buying furniture and such as, and I don't know, just doing things. Filed my taxes. I mean, been doing that regardless of me living here or not, but just filing your taxes in your own home, your own apartment. <laughs> Child, <laughs> I'm literally just playing in y'all face right now. Like this, there's truly nothing else for me to be talking about for real. So I guess I'm going to wrap it up very soon. Um, but I am curious, like based off of, based off of what I have said so far, I'm curious to hear y'all's perspectives about that. Like the whole detachment from the lock journey. Like, can any of y'all relate to what I'm saying when I say that? Like, you're no longer buying into the trend of it. You're just living your life and you have locks. You just happen to have locks. That's it. You know? And thoughts and opinions of, about dating, because my channel is tailored and for women. My audience is primarily women, so I want to hear from the ladies. Because wow. I see the conversations happening everywhere online from women about dating and stuff like that. And it's just like, wow. To live it is also another thing. It's like, wow, this is interesting. And yet, alas... I still feel encouraged and optimistic and like well, like happy and at peace because what I'm ultimately seeing is like I've been so intentional about the kind of life and feelings I want to experience in what I'm curating over here that anything that is that comes to me effortlessly and anything that is not just clears out. It just isn't. It literally isn't, and so it's gone, you know? So that's been interesting to watch, like, what those specific things are, who those specific people may be or experiences may be that are meant and that aren't, and just being in this constant state of allowing and observing and just experiencing, for real. No forcing of anything, no, like, You know, none of that. No feeling of pressure or tenseness around it or anxiety. or anything. It's just like, okay, cool. <laughs> Moving on is always the vibe. So, yeah, thoughts about that. What else did I say in this video? Concentration as a whole, as an epidemic, really. Like, leave us alone. <laughs> Y'all supposed to be in our faces all the time trying to make things relevant. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, I'm over it. I'm over it. Any day now, there's going to be like some kind of happening, whether we see a cyber situation occurring or like things happening. You've been seeing what's been happening with certain flights and stuff. It's just like other things are happening that are more worthy of attention and like awareness and preparation than talking about here and shit <laughs> or talking about whatever the F is being spoken about for the purpose of creating content is like, who cares? People are trying to afford things. You know what I'm saying? Like nonsense. <laughs> Nonsense is constantly happening. I don't know, child. Huh. So, yeah. That's, what, that's all I have for today. Like my nails again. Yeah. I love, love them so much. Mm. 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 All right, y'all. I am ready to go eat some food, get into my day, fill my cup, and continue onwards in my life having <laughs> fulfilling, enriching experiences. 
So with that being said, thank you so much for um, tuning in real quick on my random sporadic ass update video drop in video. And I will see y'all when I see y'all. Bye. <laughs> Not me waving like this. I said bye. <laughs> thank you.